Oh, hello. Let's talk about appreciation, and then we'll go deep like ocean deep. It is extraordinarily fucking difficult to appreciate something, be it an actual thing, a mental or emotional state, or an outer condition, unless you are aware of its opposite. Imagine if you were suddenly endowed with the ability to swim down to the deepest depths of the sea, with the ability to talk to fish. Your mission, go down there and find one of those crazy ass looking needle toothed lantern fish motherfuckers and explain to them the concept of wetness. Convey to them what it means to be wet. That fish is not going to ever really get what the fuck you're talking about because it has never and will never know dryness. We're kind of like lantern fish or angler fish, whatever the fuck you want to call it. We swim around in the dark mystery of life, dangling the light of ego before us. Ego's not a villain, it's just a light we generate so we have something to focus on in the incalculable darkness of ignorance of the true nature of reality. That dangly light is made of thoughts about who we are. It shines with beliefs about what reality is, and its illumination is meant to attract evidence that we exist as an individual fish within an impossibly vast and wakeful void. So we just keep swimming, just keep swimming, focused on one thing, the thoughts that dangle in front of us. The fish is your pure, unidentified consciousness, primordial, pristine mind focused entirely on thought, the objects that thoughts illuminate, and the ideas that thoughts attract. We are swimming through the sea of reality ourselves without a fucking clue as to its true nature. We are fish that do not understand what it is to be wet because we're never not that. Like the lantern fish, what we can see of reality is also very little. We can only see 0.0035% of the visual spectrum. We have to rely upon sense organs sending electrical bursts through nerves to our wrinkly pink meat computer where it is then processed, labeled, and categorized. And then we measure who we are in relation to a quantified calculation of attraction plus aversion divided by, I don't give a shit about that other shit. But what is the one actual determining factor of our existence? Is it thought? I mean, throughout the course of a day, we go through so many fucking temporary thoughts, electrical storms within our bone melon, most to be forgotten. And those myriad thoughts create brain chemicals that course through our body. And depending on whether we have an attraction or an aversion to a particular brain chemical, specific moods ensue, which create more thoughts and so forth and so fucking on. Through every thought process, every mood, throughout our lives, at every age, there's something awake behind thought. It feels like I, but without all the baggage of I am, fuck the am. No matter what, we always feel like a me, or in other words, we never forget that we exist, despite never thinking about existence itself. Throughout all our moods and shit and various behaviors and actions, we do not forget ourselves. I'm not talking about that ever undulating amorphous jellyfish self defined by characteristics of who we think we are, or despise or aspire to. I'm talking about the very faculty which allows such a thing. I'm not talking about thoughts, I'm talking about the thinker. Fuck knowledge, I'm pointing at the knower. A wave does not exist without a sea upon which it can move. And yet, that's not quite right. You are a fish, and you are wet without concept of wetness because you're always fucking wet. You can explain to a fish that the medium of its reality that it moves through happens as a result of a combination of two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom that results in something referred to by air breathers and land walkers as a fluid which has the viscosity of 1.0016 millipascal seconds. I mean, the lantern fish would be all, uh, okay. The lantern fish's knowledge of its universe has now become information and the depth of its understanding is only as deep as the information it receives and how it comprehends and categorizes it. But the motherfucker still doesn't know what wetness is and the information given has likely obscured the possibility of realizing its wetness even more so, now having been cocooned by thoughts. What if I told you, little terrestrial lantern fish, that you are and always have been and always will fucking be awake? How does that strike you? How does it hit? Now before you gobble that up and turn it into a fucking narrative, before you reject or accept it, just stop. Just drift in the emptiness. That emptiness in which you are adrift is awake. The fact that you are aware of reality should be proof that reality is in fact awareness. Not aware of, fuck the of, I'm pointing at an ineffable lucid sea. A vast, cognizant ocean. What if all the fish in the sea were made entirely of water and it was merely the belief of water that it was sometimes fish that allowed fish to be a thing? Can you see how that fish will never know wetness because its very nature is fundamentally wet? And what if a fish stopped believing it was a fish and remembered it was the fucking ocean? Then what would happen? You know what else is exactly like an ocean which all objects and all fish are made only and entirely of water? A fucking dream. Think about it. 
Every dream you've ever had in which you were at a place perceiving objects, interacting with other people, or a talking squid, or whatever the fuck you dream about. There's never been anything but you in a dream, an entire dream ocean, but instead of salty brine, it's water's consciousness, and the thoughts that are made of and occur within the sea of consciousness seem to solidify into objects, and this vast, salient, saline wakefulness conspires to create a reference point through which to perceive itself. That reference point is called me. Look, you can go read a bunch of fucking books or take classes or join some religion, adopt a philosophy, go do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not the boss of you, but here's the deal. You can absolutely figure out the mysteries of existence through observation. Observation of reality will give you clues for sure. Look above to understand what's below. That's the idea. If you want to know about the waking state, observe the dream state. Do you see what I'm getting at? If you're trying to peek behind the curtain and something about the seeking questions or regurgitated answers seem overly complicated, then that's a fucking clue that you're doing it wrong. The truth is so, so very simple that we miss it every damn time. But speaking of observation, what I really mean is observe your thoughts. Do it through meditation. Do it whilst walking walking, whilst shitting, whilst fucking. If you really want to know what the fuck is up, you can know. It just takes relentless awareness. If you observe your thoughts like a motherfucker, then the power that thought has to bind your awareness will weaken. You're effectively dissolving identification. You are that fish in water, made out of water, but you start forgetting you're a fish, and when you forget you're a fish, aka you briefly disentangle yourself from thought, then for a moment, you're the entire fucking ocean. And in that moment, you realize you always were just the ocean. What the fuck? But then you're a fish again, and because to be a fish made of water, you have to believe it, you do, because you're just made out of a belief that the ocean is out there and you are in here. The sea sequesters itself within your wet fishy ass to forget it's the ocean for a fucking minute. Reality is very fishy. Now, in the course of this little fucking talk, or perhaps it'll happen after, you might notice that dangly anglerfish appendage. It's called a esca, by the way, spelled E-S-C-A, a short, simple word, kind of like another word, E-G-O, but anywho, you might notice as a result of this, it got very fucking bright. What that looks like is a blast of thought about how reality must be real. This must be bullshit. Surely I must exist within it because my name is Shirley or of this or that or whatever the fuck. If you notice that, then good on you because you have struck at the core of things. You have found the obscuring forgetfulness of the sea who desperately wants to be a damn fish made of water for a bit. And you now have worthy thoughts to observe. Worthy because those thoughts want to be you more than anything fucking else. And by you observing them, they'll squirm like they're out of water, flapping on the fucking ground under a great and terrible vastness. So much bigger than the ocean is, the sky. Just keep watching until they get tired and slow their roll. Wait it out and let them know what dryness is. If you're not observing thought then you fucking are thought. That being said, I'm not saying believe my bullshit because ultimately it is bullshit and that what I'm pointing at can't actually be properly described. I might as well just say, hey fucker, you're wet, okay? Figure it the fuck out. Or hey, you're fucking awake, so wake the fuck up to the fact that you're awake. Not helpful, really. One ineffable dreamer decided to dream a forgetful dream of itself in which it was something other than itself. It doesn't want itself in the forgetful form of you to wake up even though you've never been asleep. But, so it seems, in order for the one dreamer to dream of itself in every possible iteration, then some of those iterations will naturally be blessed or cursed, I can't decide which, but will have the compulsion to figure it the fuck out at all costs and remember. If that's not you, it's all good. Your fundamental nature remains the same whether you like it or hate it, want it or believe it or not. Water's fucking wet no matter what you may think. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. You are in absolute accordance with the grand oceanic plan, but part of this plan seems to be a never-ending unfolding. There are the rogues, though, the ones mad to awaken, those who don't want to just tap at the aquarium glass and wonder what it's like to be water. They're the ones who say fuck it and strip down and jump in. Radiant and suffering, fucked up fish whose very madness stems from some intangible knowing that they are not sushi and scales, but they are the very water of existence itself. And they can only know that through forgetting fishiness and remembering their inherent wetness. And when they do, they fucking appreciate everything. But water has no words. It can't fucking talk. Hello. Fashioning a thought cup and filling it up with ocean water and pointing at it and saying, look, this is the whole fucking sea is bullshit in the same exact way that everything I have said is ultimately bullshit. How can I explain that you are awake when you are already fucking awake and have always been awake? How can I talk existence into realizing it is existence when it's never not fucking existed? 
Those things that have bound you, existence itself, are thought forms, so ethereal but as powerful as an ocean current to sweep stillness into motion. You know what, let's just forget all about this little talk, okay? We'll just drift away and appreciate the ocean of existence. Let's make like water and flush the shit we think we know. Will you experience yourself? You bet. Just remember that water is always wet, and then forget. Toodaloo.